Mr. Prime Minister, once again, welcome. It's an honor to have you here. Uh, Secretary Kerry and, and I, and along with President Obama, enjoyed our dinner last night. We had a small dinner where uh, I think uh, all of us thought it was uh, a remarkable, uh, a remarkable uh, um, way in which uh, Senator, uh, Senator, President Obama, and uh, and the Prime Minister uh, uh, connected. Um, each discussing what each of our countries faced and what needed to be done. It was, uh, it, it was re really quite remarkable. I've been to many of these dinners, but I can't think of anyone that uh, uh, went as well. And, uh, and happy uh, Navaratri, Mr. Uh, 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 Prime Minister. It's uh, good of you to honor us, visit us in, on, during this Holy Week. And, uh, uh, the Prime Minister is, uh, is fasting, and we keep taking him to dinners and lunches. Um, and uh, as we Catholics would say, that's an occasion for sin. Uh, but um, uh, we appreciate the fact he has spent so much time with us. And it's good to have a chance to come together to celebrate uh, the relationship that has grown enormously over the past uh, two decades. I don't think it could have been said better than the way uh, Secretary Kerry said it. This has always been the promise, the promise over the horizon. There was no reason why the oldest and the largest democracy should not be working together. But it's been a promise, and it's always just been out of reach. But uh, I think one, one of the reasons why it's come into reach uh, is not just uh, uh, because of uh, the, the Prime Minister but because of the ways in which uh, the different ethnicities, faces, uh, faiths, tongues uh, uh, of both our proud nations have come together. Uh, you know, uh, the way, uh, as John said, the way uh, entrepreneurship seems to be hardwired into both cultures, where Indian Americans whose talents have shaped the fabric of this country and our schools and our hospitals and our courtrooms and our government and our arts, entertainment, Main Street to Silicon Valley, uh, and uh, the way it's reflected in our nation's military uniforms and those who wear them. You know, uh, most of all, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, we admire, we admire your democracy and the message it sends to people around the world. No nation, no nation has to choose between development and freedom. We can and must secure both. They go hand in hand. I saw these virtues firsthand in a number of visits I have made to India over the year. Most recently, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, I, uh, I uh, brought my wife Jill and my daughter and my son-in-law to India with me uh, less than a year ago. And, uh, we, uh, we, and I learned something, as I told you, in the ante room. When I was in Mumbai, Secretary Kissinger, I found out that uh, what I had heard for so many years was true, that uh, I actually had relatives in Mumbai, uh, for real. A press person after the second press conference I had presented me with a portrait, a, a copy of a portrait of my great-great-great-grandfather, who the Irish part of me is hard to admit, but was an English sea captain. Um, who, uh, who settled uh, and lived in India, and there are three Biden families in Mumbai. So I'm going home with you, Mr. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and uh, and uh, my wife and my daughter got to see what I've had the ability to see in the past. The incredible dynamism and diversity that reinforced in all of us the remarkable fact uh, where we find ourselves. The question is no longer is whether it's in the interest of the United States and India to build a strong relationship, as President Obama says, into the defining partnership of the century ahead. Uh, the question is how ambitious and how rapidly are we prepared to build that partnership? And I believe, as the President does, we should be bold. Mr. Prime Minister, you won the largest democratic exercise in history uh, with over 550 million Indians casting their votes uh, earlier this year. Um, and, uh,
you campaigned on some of the very goals we hope to achieve in this relationship. Greater investment in India's economy, a modernized defense sector, an inclusive growth for both of our peoples. And your support for economic reform paves the way for the expansion of our nearly $100 billion in trade on a yearly basis. This work uh, will not be easy. It demands us both making tough choices, but I think that uh, we have an uh, incredible opportunity before us. Mr. Prime Minister, I think together you and President Obama can usher the partnership of two great nations and two great peoples into the 21st century in the way we've been looking for and hoping for for some time. I am often known for quoting Irish poets by my colleagues, uh, but one of my favorite Irish poets is William Butler Yeats. And uh, he thought a great deal of the great Indian po po poet, Tagore, uh, who was, he thought he was among the very best. And he was India's first Nobel Prize winner, the only person to ever have two of his compositions chosen as the national anthem of two different countries, India and Bangladesh. I'll summarize what Yeats wrote about Tagore in the book that won Tagore the Nobel Prize that came to him over 100 years ago. He said, his lyrics are full of subtle rhythm, of untranslatable delicacies, of invention, the work of a supreme culture. The same can be said of India today. A diverse community, humming with dynamism and energy, great and ancient society, reinventing itself to be able to thrive in the 21st century. Tagore wrote, and I quote, you can't cross the sea merely by standing and staring at the water. We have to act together. Mr. Prime Minister, our conversations these past two days leave me with absolute confidence that we can cross the sea together. And uh, we are encouraged, all of us who have been in contact with you these last couple days, with your sense of purpose, with your incredible energy, and with your commitment to this relationship. So, Mr. Prime Minister, welcome again, and uh, the floor is yours.